Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Game, the roundtable show that deals with games, arts, movies, electronics, and pretty much everything else. I'm your host, GQ. We're going to be talking about a very, very t good topic. It's one that's actually real dear to my heart. Best video game franchise of all time. What is the best video game franchise of all time? If you want to get in on the discussion, go to Game Show Chat at Gmail and email us. Leave your comments down there on the uh, comment section below the video. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter at Game Show Chat. To my left, I have Mega Sean. To my right, the great Daidakuji. Gentlemen, game one. Let's get into this one. What's the <laughs> best, best video game franchise of all time, in your opinion? And that's going to be extremely hard because if I were to pick one of them, the one that made me a gamer to this day would be Super Mario Brothers. Super Mario Brothers. Super Mario Brothers, I remember sitting in my uncle's basement during a barbecue that everybody had. And everybody, everybody's outside playing, except for me. I was down there playing Super Mario Brothers, trying to get that guy to jump over that freaking that friggin pit in the first level. Just, you know, back in the day when you didn't have the coordination that you have right now. Uh -huh. Super Mario Brothers probably would be my most one that I hold dear to my heart, but when it comes to the, the favorite one, that's a huge... I mean, I can go through hundreds of games as I play like Street Fighter. I mean, when it comes to the fighting games, Street Fighter 2, you know, I know you know the first time you saw Street Fighter oh, 2 machine. Course, I can yeah. tell you the first time I saw one, too. I saw one at a 7-Eleven, not too far from my house. Yeah. Had, first to ride time, the had to ride my bike to get there. First time I saw it, I was at Ford, Ford and Tell, the drive-in at the concession stand, and saw a group of people. People supposed to be watching movies, and they're crowded around an arcade machine playing Street Fighter. And I go, wow, this game looks awesome. Now I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I noticed you did this. I mean that that coordination thing. That I used to hate watching people that did that. Oh, I yeah, was like, I was like, stop. Give me the controller. But let's move it over to Megatron. What's your, what's one of your favorite video game franchises of all time? One of my favorite. Um, I would definitely have to go with um, Metal Gear. Okay. But I'm not, you know, the, the happiest about this new cyborg <laughs> subsidiary. Game, but uh, um, you're talking about Metal Gear uh, Revengeance, Reve 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 whatever they want to call it. Yeah, like I'm not. It used know. to be Rising. Now they want to make it Revengeance or Revengeance yeah. or whatever. It's like <laughs> just make it Rising. That would have been better. Yeah. So you've got I've got Metal Gear. Um, I'm definitely um, in, in its brief existence. Gears of War, um, Halo, I enjoyed, but then it, it seems at some point they kind of let me down. Like I was such so on board with um, Metal Gear, and then I have to deal with the cyborg and the sword, you know, and then the, the espionage point of it is, is kind of gone, because I remember, you know, the guy could smoke a cigarette, or well, Snake he could smoke a cigarette, and being able to run through, and just the whole imagination process of faking like you're dead, you know, you open up the ketchup package while you're laying on the ground, and then the guard comes in, like that had blew my mind because right. um, on Nintendo, I had never played Metal Gear. You know, it was okay. more Mario, Duck Hunt, Excite Bike. You know, those were the games that I had played. So to get to something like that and then play it when it went to some of the next gen consoles was um, what was great for me. And then with Gears of War, but obviously, you know, not a similar game, but just, you know, those are some of the ones that I remember. Okay, so it sounds like the innovation of Metal Gear is kind of what drew you into Metal Gear. It was, it was a little bit different than a lot of the other games of, its, of the day. I mean, they were thinking of all these little intricacies in the game that a lot of games just kind of would, you know, glance over and didn't even think about. Now, it seems that you're picking a lot of the warlike games, and Jack Thompson might be trying to chase you down and, and, and uh, sue you for uh, possibly committing some violent crimes in the future. Well, I, mean, I, I commit all my violent crimes on, on television, you know, via, um, via a video game. And I, but this is something about the action that okay. gets me. You know, obviously, obviously with Gears of War, it's locust or some type of monstrosity um, coming at you. But just, you know, the fast paced, you know, in regards to the coordination that you had mentioned earlier, that's never been an issue for myself. You know, that, that hand eye is exceptional. Um, but with Metal Gear and Gears of War, um, Madden, but I think with all games, you know, money kind of starts to bring it down. And I think the innovation of Metal Gear is what made me a fan. But, but then that natural progression kind of also made me not as much as a fan because instead of, you know, the, the hard 
you know, Clint Eastwood, you know, voice type guy, and right. he's, you know, the Rambo. Um, Lookalike, pretty right. much, yeah. And then he's okay. that hardcore, and then there's this soft, you know, angelic type guy with the sword, and I just, you know, I... But I th isn't that just kind of the extension of what usually happens with a lot of video games as far as the Japanese development for them that more, I guess you could say, not as masculine, not as... Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, bulky type guy is not as attractive to them. So they decided their, you know, their protagonist for their games nowadays is going to be kind of this. We got Titus from Final Fantasy Seven. I'm sorry, excuse me, Final Fantasy X, who just suddenly came in when you had Cloud. Cloud was awesome. Cloud was, you know, he wasn't rugged or anything. He was kind of a pretty boy too, but he didn't really take crap from anybody. He just kind of went in there and just did it. Titus was all about his feelings and. It is the, it's like, well, you know, so is it, is it, that's something, is that something that's um, happening in video games where we're seeing that you get in that touchy feely type thing in all of our games when it kind of shouldn't be there? I can't really say for myself because most of the games I play, you know, <laughs> touchy feely. They're not really touchy feely anything. <laughs> I mean, if one of the games I'm playing right now is God of War, you know, God of War that came out, not really t touchy feely at all, but also it's a, a, a Western developed game. And the guy is hardcore. He's man. Well, He's Kratos, a man's man. Kratos is in touch with his feelings, but all of his feelings are anger. Rage. So he rage and get in there and, and beat somebody down, which, again, that's, that's him. That's fine. Yeah. It works for that game that's franchise. One of my favorite I will series say too. That, that definitely would be one of the best. Yeah, um, that, just, that series, when it came around, it blew my mind. It, that's, that is how you make games nowadays. And it just seems like they're coming few and far between of original type stuff. Because, you know, I go to the back when I look for my favorite, you know, genre or genre of games or favorite games because those are stuff that started me now. And now they're – I have a lot of games that I like to play now, like God of War, but they, they don't – they're not the same. I don't think – like these games, they, they're, they're here with us now, but are they going to be here to stay? Like Super Mario, but I don't think Mario is going anywhere ever. Well, you know, the, he's not grown up. If, if Mario goes anywhere, Nintendo will go bankrupt because yeah. Nintendo only has, for the most part, they have Zelda, Mario, and Metroid, and that's kind of the extent. But, but I don't like Pokemon. Oh, I understand I that there's millions of kids that do, but I don't like Pokemon. I, I, I don't want to catch any of them. That some people <laughs> couldn't consider Pokemon their, the best franchise ever because if you think about it, Pokemon did kind of bring... The Game Boy, the, the DS, the Advance, all that made those things popular. I mean, they sold more systems than almost anything well, out there. Well, I, and I'll give you that. But I'll yeah. definitely give you that. There's one other franchise that uh, actually somebody has kind of whispered in my ear that they, they like from the PC realm of gaming was MechWarrior. Now, MechWarrior was one of those games where you just got in there and you were just rolling around in this huge, enormous robot and beating up other huge, enormous robots. So, I mean, and I even remember going to Chicago to Dave and Buster's and they had a Mech Warrior simulator where you could get in there in an actual cockpit and with multiple screens and you sitting there playing Mech Warrior, you know, doing it big. And that was actually a really interesting type of, uh, type of uh, game franchise that um, I think that really thrived on the PC though, because of course you have your keyboard and mouse, oh, yeah. all the different buttons you can lay out. You can't have a 32 button controller. <laughs> yeah, you maybe, can. Maybe on the Jaguar. Maybe, <laughs> man, no, the Jaguar was a failure, though. Come on now, let's be realistic. Now, even though I have a Jaguar, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you have that, whatever that thing was. Oh, yeah. Like Steel oh, Battalion. Steel Battalion. Yeah. Steel Battalion yeah. did try to do it. Steel Battalion. Yeah, Steel they Battalion tried. did try to do it. The only problem is they ran into a, well, of course, at the time, a $150 game was ridiculous, even though Neo Geo had done it before. But now you look at DLC and, and downloadable content and all these other various little things coming in, you may as well call it that you're getting a $150, $170 game nowadays. But unfortunately, our time is coming to a close. Mega Sean, thank you. Great Daddy Takuji, always a pleasure. Again, if you want to join in on the conversation, gameshowchat at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at gameshowchat. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Gentlemen, game over. Castlevania, don't you?